मुझे माफ करना मुझे इसमें दूसरों से ज्यादा टाइम लग गया पर मुझे इसे कभी प्रैक्टिस करने का मौका नहीं मिला है ये है जिसे कहते हैं सुपर सेन थ्री लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स नन अदर देन अंकुर जवेरी he is a voice over artist who has voiced over 200 films commercials uh he is the voice of the goku dragon ball super that's on cartoon network uh you are in fact the voice over behind uh jack in the iconic movie titanic the hindi version of it uh you have voiced virat kohli in so many tv commercials <laughs> that we've seen over the years as well it blows my mind ankur uh, congratulations on everything talk to thank me thank you so much thank you so about much about how <clears throat> voice over as a career even started and how your journey as a voice over artist started so uh, back then of course this was uh, way back when i was 7 years old and uh, uh, this was in 1994 95 sorry 1983 84 85 is when i was more into acting i was doing child artist roles and you know those typical movies back then i mean uh, i we can laugh about it now but where you would have a younger version of a govinda or a you know of a sunny deol or a sanjay dat so back then i used to do these younger versions of all of them and voicing per se was not really considered a field you know that someone would want to pursue so i used to end up dubbing for other kids who would be acting in commercials and in some serials and stuff like that but you know at the time of shoot if let's say the uh, lines have not got recorded right these kids might not be able to replicate it so i would end up going and dubbing for them and that's how the journey started uh, i used to do a lot of jingles like back then you know the bon vita first commercial and uh, all of those you know maggi and stuff like that and so then slowly and steadily towards probably 1994 95 uh, when other animation channels you know started coming into india and it was taken very seriously that okay uh, the indian audience would like to see localized content and they started dubbing those english shows in hindi is when this was really considered a field for dubbing yes you had advertising back then so you know you had these commercials back then you know where between shows you would see them and uh, so that was still on but dubbing as a field where english to hindi or you know so many other different languages to hindi and now in fact we are dubbing it from uh, even from hindi or from other languages into the other rural languages in india so it's really grown it's really expanded and it's a full fledged profession now that's <laughs> amazing to hear and right, it takes right. a lot of talent as well uh, how do you go about your process and um, is there a particular way in which you get into the zone for different characters and how many voices are you particularly known for ankur so uh, when i started posting some stuff on instagram in 2020 very recently i was overwhelmed with the response that i got from so many kids and they were like sir you're the voice of this character and you're the voice of that character do you know you did this series as well and i was like really was that me and they would send me a clip and i'll be oh yeah this is me <laughs> so i had literally forgotten a lot of the shows which i had done uh, a lot of films predominantly you end up remembering things like titanic of course you can't forget that but there were so many other shows and series which Uh, i was a part of and thankfully these kids keep reminding me cause my journey has been like honestly speaking for 37 years and uh, besides just doing the dubbing process like uh, i've also been a channel voice so i'm also the channel voice for uh, star sports and uh, hot star and uh, you know have been back there during uh, for disney also and now for z5 so it's it's been a lot of work on a day to day basis so sometimes you end up forgetting and uh, so like it's been titanic then it's been uh, uh, the voice of al pacino in the godfather oh wow uh, the voice of goku of course which was the biggest anime back then and yeah. even now we are trying to get right there and uh, so so also this uh, commercial called kinder joy mm. there's this small egg kinderino so i've been the voice for kinderino for 12 years you know and i've i've been the voice of coincidently the voice of virat kohli <laughs> since the last so many years and now of course Uh, virat sir dubs for himself so uh, yeah but then it's been That's a great journey beautiful so <laughs> i mean these are iconic movies right yep. you yep. spoke about the godfather you spoke about uh, titanic and for so many people you have been the voice that's gotten them closer to the character that's right 
and that must be an incredible feeling um, overall. And uh, when you when you watch the movie, I, I do feel that very little credit goes to the artist who's given the voice, but you form a very, very important role. And coming from someone who's part of the voice industry, I know the amount of work it takes. So kudos to you, Ankur. So this, this what you just touched upon is a very important point is, uh, so back then we were, in fact, there used to be contracts signed between voice artists and, uh, and in the production house that you're not going to reveal that you have dubbed for a particular hero, ah. per se the Bolly Bollywood industry, you know? So we would have to be mum about it. And that's exactly how things were. But with uh, online being such a social media being such a huge thing now, it's all out there in the open. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And uh, talk to me about Virat Kohli's voiceover. Like, I mean, is there any way you try to sound different? Do you try to sound like him? Uh, or is that uh, a very generic voice that you usually come up with? So very honestly, uh, back then when he was just a new team member and uh, you know how each team member once they start playing well they start getting commercials so his initial few commercials you know I ended up being the younger voice so that's been a problem my voice has been youngish more than you know my age I'm 45 mm. so sometimes for star sports yeah I end up sounding like that but but more or less my voice is still very young so mm. when they were casting for it and Virat had still not hit the stardom which he is at now. So mm. they just said, okay, fine, haan, iske liye to sahi Chalo, usko bula lete aur kar lete. so I was still dubbing for him as me. You know? mm. And later on, when you got to know, okay, he has this particular style and he's so camera friendly. He is so stylized, uh, very unlike the cricketers back then, you know, mm. who didn't really know uh, expressions and uh, you know, on point. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. all these guys were like, oh, wow, you know, uh, Virat is such a good actor too. So then slowly, I start, the more you listen to him, you know, you end up, uh, you know, getting those nuances and the style, which is like, uh, let's say, uh, ye se tasty nahi. Is wo bhi, is, ye se bake nahi. Ye tasty bhi hai. To bhi try kije. Too yum. You know, so those kind of things like, so he has that one uppish uh, way of, it's slightly the voice is pitched at the back and it's yeah. a, a little more nasal, but at the same time, he has this very youngish quality. <laughs> so I, I try to hit that note, yeah. Let's talk about Cartoon Network and everyone's oh, yes. excited about Dragon Ball. Uh, Even I am so excited about it because uh, to tell you something about this, we were dubbing this mm. in 2006 and we dubbed this for four years. There were 300 episodes and 13 films in the span of four years and Dragon Ball Z back then became legendary. Yeah. And uh, all the kids who are now in their 20s, uh, for them, it was a growing process. See, when you, when you are uh, seeing some show, when you see it on television for a year or maybe like, you know, for six months, you do relate to it. But something which is like four years, you become a part of that. True. So, so all those kids, when I, when I started, uh, you know, uh, posting things on Instagram, they were like, so where is Dragon Ball? Why aren't you getting it back here? And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, how exactly, what exactly is this? I didn't even know the difference between cartoon and anime back then. I'll be very honest. Mm. So these kids, you know, they, they enlightened me as to what is the difference. And uh, now the shows are not, you know, anime is not coming into uh, India. So we tried a few things, which as in how you start questioning me, I'll answer that. Dragon Ball Super, of course, is something we are looking forward to. Uh, the penetration of anime in India has been incredible. I, I think incredible. Now, a lot of kids, like you said, know the difference between cartoon and anime. Right. And there are cartoon nerds and anime nerds like never before. And Otakus I, I, as they call themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's penetrating into like tier two, tier three cities. as Exactly. Well. Exactly. So, so earlier, what used to happen is uh, anything which was in an animated form mm. was considered cartoon, mm. you know, but uh, very distinctly internationally they have this uh, bifurcation of cartoons being for the younger audience uh, which still has like if you hear the dialogues too you'd know that it has a slight bounce in the voice okay oh I was doing this wala tha. you know that kind of a, it is because it's appealing to that teeny you know youngish youthful yeah. crowd 
whereas anime is is viewed by teens and adults alike and it has uh, the story is more serious mm. and uh, and so that is exactly what these kids are saying ki sir we are watching a lot of cartoons but please could you speak to the authorities and could you tell them and convince them to get anime because it seems anime used to be shown earlier on a tsunami slot on cartoon network but yeah. maybe due to licensing or certain reasons it it discontinued and uh, but i am so glad that these kids started these uh, anime communities in india and uh, there were these uh, youtubers who started uh, you know dubbing these uh, every month there's this comic which is called manga mm. which is very anime you know it's yeah. japanese uh, stories which are written you know in comic form and yeah. each each month it's a different sto- different episode and sure. many episodes make an arc so they used to keep dubbing this to create more awareness and they got the fraternity closer in 2018 they had a, a movie the dragon ball broly movie screened mm. here in pbr and that's exactly how this community has been growing 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 and post lockdown uh, when the programming head of cartoon network you know he said okay, okay i'm revamping cartoon network and i'm trying to listen to you kids and i'm trying to listen to you ankur and let's experiment this let's see how it goes if this works we'll get more so wow. kudos to them kudos to them so kudos to cartoon network again you bet you bet for being a, a part of our uh, our growth story <laughs> uh, it's a right to passage by the end of the day uh, i have a 5 year old daughter and i'm like you should watch cartoon network because that's what i watched right true true and true it's it truly is wonderful that uh, you are part of um, the cartoon that kids are getting exposed to and uh, you form such a integral part of dragon ball super as well absolutely Kamiya absolutely meha, we love <laughs> goku as a character um, i want your perspective for a lot of people who wish to make it to Uh, a dubbing or a voice over industry so i this is something which uh, so on instagram everyone's most of the aspiring voices they keep asking me sir how exactly do you go about this and uh, back then things were very different back then uh, there were no mediums to observe and learn back then you'd see it on television or in a movie and we used to have these vhs tapes mm-hmm. which we'd get back home and we'd play in a vcrs and rewind and play rewind and play and rewind and play and keep practicing along with that you know and keep speaking those dialogues like the stars would uh, that's exactly how we learned or when we would get the opportunity to to dub in a studio we'd see exactly how the seniors were performing and would be all awestruck and floored and we would be like whoa what a voice so back then it was still more about the voice back then it was very much like you know if it all like sri ram i would say that you know this is the kind of a texture if you have that then yes you can do voice overs because like i said it was more commercial ori- oriented not really dubbing oriented when the dubbing field expanded there were more characters which came at, came in and even a person even a person who had probably you know this kind of a voice you know even he would have opportunities of doing multiple jobs in a day but it is like you said persistence so it is also about knowing whether you want to do this for the rest of your life mm. firstly that secondly being that um, you know, you are going to get rejections even i get rejections at this point because it's just about you fitting that particular criteria the character or the tonal quality and it's it's absolutely fine to get you know to face rejections yeah it it's is not, it is not, not about you have a bad voice it's no, just whether you fit in the requirement or, yeah. correct so for that what does one need to do for that is it just about uh, yeah i have a good voice sir and uh, i'd like to make it no it's now more about having a range mm. that that you can hey kids main hu kinder you know you can do that too and you can do you can do kame hame you know you can do that as well which is slightly more uh, you know uh, older in terms of age and at the same time you can do only on the star sports network you can even do that so you, if you have a range you probably fit into things better mm. it that has become essential uh and now there are more workshops kids get to learn a lot they get to uh, you know uh, there is there are many the access points over here on youtube as well there are so many learning videos but it's just that you'd have to give it at least 3 4 years and see whether you can make it make you can make a mark you need to be patient and you need to self judge and realize 
do i have it in me i used to do these looney tunes you know which is which was a big hit on cartoon network so you know pocky pig you know those kind of characters or uh, speedy gonzales you know those kind of so i used to do th- those because i had a very thin voice like i told you back then i had a very very thin voice so when even the casting of titanic was voice casting was happening someone else had o- already dubbed for three reels and they were not happy with the person's voice because he was sounding older so mm. i took the opportunity of going ahead and saying can i audition for this and mm. even now if you see the theater version of titanic which i had dubbed which is probably uh, available on some site or the other it is a perfect blend so it is about knowing what you can do i couldn't have done those typical macho hero uh, you know voiceovers back then which i can do now so it's also about realizing what exactly you fit into and doing that yeah I, i think most of the time we get into our heads and we want to sound good all the time right it's not about that at all it's about it's about, about, it's about expression the, performance it's it's not about the voice like i said it's more about what you do with that voice yeah <laughs> amazing ankur this is been an absolute treat uh, we'd love to see the voices that you can do um is there a little jhalki that we'll get to see Oh, I haven't prepared anything, unfortunately. Form. I'm so sorry, but yes, we can. Uh, in case if if we are reaching the closing time of uh, your yeah. segment, we can do a kame ha me ha together. Why don't yeah. we do that? Because yeah. that would be awesome for the show. And uh, the thing which I want to compliment Cartoon Network for is that it has been very difficult to get. So there have been animes, right, in other OTTs and elsewhere, but it's been either in Japanese or in English. but cartoon network has uh, taken this plunge is trying to experiment localizing it not just in hindi but even in tamil and telugu That's so true. that if the market grows then more anime can come here easily and the popularity will increase so even the fans need to understand that many of them who prefer subs over and overdubs and stuff like that that let this market grow and let's support cartoon network full on in this movement and it is going to in the long term benefit all of you uh, it's great to see this move that's uh, towards regional content and how yes. it's being empowered at the same time as well absolutely. so absolutely kudos cartoon network ankur javeri this has been an absolute pleasure look forward to catch up with you soon let's make yeah. that happen until then 1 2 and 3 come Ha me ha <laughs> Fever fever <laughs>